In the Disney movie The Game Plan, Dwayne Johnson, better known as The Rock, stars as a starting quarterback for the Boston Rebels, a fictional pro team. But yo, football isn't new for The Rock. In real life, the man walked on as a defensive end at the University of Miami, where he played from 1991 to 94, and he was part of the 1991 National Championship for the U. ESPN Sean Salisbury paid a visit to the set of the game plan to see how this college defensive player learned to look like a real pro quarterback. Blue 85! Blue 85! Hunt, hunt. When you look at me, what do you see? You see greatness. Now, when you play in, in defense, intensity on the defensive side, go kill the quarterback. Right. Now, you, did you have to, how much did you have to change your mindset and demeanor to be more cerebral on the other side and not let too much bother you? It, it all comes in the prep work and getting together with the quarterback coaches, getting together with uh, the, the football coordinators who were on the movie, um, who have played the position before and trying to understand that mentality, watching tape, watching film. Yeah! I did it again! What was it about him when he first started doing this that you were concerned about as the movie rolled along? Said, you know, he doesn't do this well, we got to fix it. At 6'4", 235, getting him on, under center, getting him comfortable under right. center, and really looking like a guy, and making sure his shoulders weren't too far forward, and that his feet were good coming out. The first two steps is critical, as you know, coming out, out of that snap. And we worked on that, we repped that, we repped that, and, and kept on going. And by the time we got done with it, man, he was so fluid by the end of day two or three, we said, we got no problem now. What was tougher, the physical side, grip on the ball, feet, dropping back, breaking the huddle, licking your fingers, looking like a quarterback, or the, or the mental side of knowing where to throw it and do all this? What was tougher? Um, all that kind of stuff was, was, was tougher. The little things that would make me into a believable quarterback, like you said, from licking the fingers. How to grab your towel. The, the hand towel, that, the grip, the look, the, you know, the calling the plays, coming up to the line of scrimmage, calling the audibles, what you're going to do, uh, calling fake audibles, just all those kinds of things that you realize are just vital. Grip, did they change it when you first started out from just playing catch with your buddies to when they had you be Joe Kingman and this is the grip change? A hundred percent. When I first grabbed the ball, you know, down in Miami, I just I grab it like this. Mechanically, everything was completely off. Uh, and that's the first detail you learn is just that grip. Okay, so that's your grip right How's there. That look? Basically it looks beautiful. Now ball placement. When you first throw it, were you just one of those guys that threw it anywhere? Did you have to change that? Uh, mechanically, uh, ball placement was awful. I, you know, I'd come up here, I'd leave it down here, uh, you know, I'd force the ball. Uh, now, tell me I'm correct, bring the ball up here, right? Yeah. How's that look? You look beautiful. <laughs> See, you said it, it looks beautiful. And then now, now where's the ball go from there? Huh? Ball goes from here. So you're back, you go over the, you're back to the ear and let it fly. You know how important we've talked about the credibility and bringing the authenticity to the character. Yeah, this is a movie about a, a guy finding his daughter and getting life in perspective and all those things. But if he doesn't sell to the audience his credibility as an NFL quarterback, right now, right here, we both know we lose the audience immediately. 6 5 260 and an all-pro superstar quarterback. That's what Joe Kingman is. A man whose search for the holy grail of football, the championship, has been cut short by his sometimes selfish play. All on the legs of Joe Kingman. Nevertheless, Joe Kingman plays football like a man obsessed. Obsessed by the game of football, his true love, obsessed by himself, and obsessed by the lifestyle that a superstar quarterback in his prime leads. What a moment for Kingman, his teammates, and certainly Boston's fans. There's many perks to being the king. It is caught, touchdown, Boston. Joe Kingman is the star player. Everybody get on the king's back, and I'm gonna lead you to the promised land. When the game's on the line, you want Joe to have the ball. Touchdown, it's all over. Yeah, I did it again. He's a phenomenally talented player. Kingman with some fancy footwork. He's forced out of the pocket. There's no one as good as him. He's one of the greatest. Simply the best. Football is my life. Beyond the field, nothing else matters. Nothing. If nothing else really matters, why does that championship ring elude Kingman? Some of the experts say it's because he's too selfish. Joe Kingman has, uh, has a, you know, a wonderful uh, vision of himself. He's very egotistical. 
guy is a complete pain in the neck. He's a little bit selfish. Tell me about that last play. <sighs> well, I did my job. You know, anytime you're in a competitive sport like this, like, like you are in professional football, um, Everybody wants to compete, and everybody wants to grab the brass ring. But unfortunately, only one man could grab that brass ring, and it's been Joe Kingman for years and years and years. There's plays where I'm open, and he's not getting me the ball. He has Sanders wide open. He's not going that way. I trust my legs more than Sanders' hands. I think his biggest endorsement deal must be with Crazy Glue, because he's never given up the rock. Hey, Joe, distribute the football. Get everybody a touch. Marv, I've never seen a quarterback who doesn't trust his oh. wide receivers with the oh. game on the line like this. And I'm not just trying to stand and clap for Mr. Kingman. I'd like to score, too. I'd like my sports center highlight reel. When you look at me, what do you see, Steve? You see greatness is what you see. There's no I on team, Joe. I've seen Joe Kingman in practice, true story. He threw a pass 70 yards and caught it. And my instinct told me it was a change of play. And what was the audible? The audible was, well, Joe Kingman's on the field again doing everything he possibly can. If you're trying to try to set me up here to talk bad about Joe Kingman, you're, you're the wrong guy. You know, you got the wrong guy, because I'm a lineman and I protect him. Reminds me of an old Mac Davis quote. It's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I mean, sure, we all love Joe Kingman. We've watched him throughout the years. But come on, he's never had a championship. He's been in position to have a championship. He's played with talented teams. But when it came time to actually win the ring, where was Joe Kingman? You know, it's funny. I told my publicist that uh, you weren't supposed to ask me why I haven't won the championship game yet, but it's okay. I'll answer you because I'm a man's man, and clearly you don't stand up to your own end of the bargain. You weren't supposed to ask me that. However, 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 the reason why? Ask my teammates. That's why. That's why. Bold words from Boston quarterback Joe Kingman. The window appears to be closing on your football team. Is this the King's last chance to snag that elusive ring? To be successful, we have to play as a team. Uh, everybody's going to have to contribute, and everybody's going to have to think about everybody else. You preach team concept, yet your quarterback and your leader appears to be an I guy. I, I don't think Joe is selfish as so much as he's confident. I think that his confidence is sometimes mistaken for selfishness. At 30-something years old, the clock is ticking. It's ticking on your career. Joe, listen to me. Sit down. Think about this for a second. When you do get enshrined in the Hall of Fame, and you will, when you're sitting around with all the other guys in the Hall of Fame, they're not talking about numbers. They're not talking about stats. They're talking about championships. They're talking about what it feels like, what it smells like to win a championship. Are you going to be able to join that conversation? Think about it. When you look at me, what do you see? You see greatness.